intellectual curiosity, and the will to achieve at a high level in all aspects of life. That is the DNA of a Stanford women's volleyball player. It's these unique traits that have served as the foundation of a program that's in the conversation for one of the best in the country every single year. 22 Final Four appearances and a trip to the NCAA tournament every year since its inception. But how do you build and sustain this type of success? You start with the people and relationships that make this program so special. So what better way to build trust, respect, and selflessness than to go beyond your comfort zone as a team, as the 2018 Stanford Women's Volleyball team did during its foreign tour in Europe? When I think of this past season, it, my face lights up for a lot of different reasons. I would say it really started uh, in our Europe trip over the summer, and that was an incredible time where we really got to know each other. The two freshmen coming in, and that was, I loved that experience because it was great team bonding in a new country, kind of put yourself out of that comfort zone. The culture is made up of all the athletes, and what you, what's unique about Stanford is also what's common amongst the sports is that there's all these kids that I think if you ask a lot of the coaches they would say the athletes are intellectually curious and they're high achievers and they excel in a lot of different ways and so that permeates our culture but the culture of the program changes every year and so to me I have to let the culture develop based on the people that we're dealing with day to day. With head coach Kevin Hambly entering his second year on the farm, the Cardinal student athletes looked to develop a strong level of trust through genuine relationships, both on and off the court. Something they found they were lacking after a loss to Florida in the 2017 national semifinals. Winning our freshman year and then uh, making it to the final four and losing in the semifinals our sophomore year, I think kind of having that feeling of a bit of disappointment with our finish, it's really not a fun feeling to end your season on a loss. Um, and I think kind of instilling that feeling um, and those emotions that we did feel at the end of my sophomore year um, were a big driving force. Following heartbreak in 2017, the Cardinal entered 2018 with specific goals to improve the team both on and off the court, all with the single intention of being the best team in the country at the end of the year. As we talked about goals, it was, it's win the national championship. And um, so for me, I was just trying to change things up and mix it up and, and try to stimulate uh, the, the appropriate things to help them kind of be the best team possible. So we, we trained a lot different than we did the year before just because it didn't work. And, uh, but I think the expectations were pretty simple. It's, it's going to be the same as it is every year here, I assume. It, let's win it. I mean, that's why you're at Stanford. In order to be the best, you have to beat the best. And after a 2-0 start to the season, the Cardinal would face its first major test of 2018. A trip to Provo, Utah, to play nationally ranked BYU on its home court. We had played against American and Howard, had been on the road for a long time in DC, and we knew going down to BYU that was gonna be, um, it was gonna be a challenging match. They have a great atmosphere going into it. They had a ton of fans that were all really excited about volleyball. And from just being a volleyball player, that was exciting. It's exciting to be in an area that um, they really value and cherish your sport. Two set points, here is number three. Martindale, epic, they go right back to Perry. No doubt about that one. BYU closes out the first set. 24 20, set point two. Plummer to Lake. Epic. Ronnie Perry! Formico right back to Plummer, and that beats Mary Lake. The Cardinal will push this thing to four sets. Pass back over by Epic. The BYU block will try and reset Campbell, and that ball is down. We'll go to a fifth set. Sydney Wilson now back in a Big time pressure situation to serve. Ronnie 
Jones, Perry, and Eschenberg in the front row. Perry. Tools the block with the tip. It is match point for BYU. What a battle. And Plummer. No! Point BYU! Down goes number one. Reflecting on the BYU match, it reminded me exactly of the Florida match <laughs> in the semifinals. Uh, especially at the end of the day when we lost. I mean, BYU was a great team, and in that moment, they were definitely stronger than us, and they definitely had an amazing chemistry on the court that was pretty visible from the start. Um, and I think everyone sitting in the locker room after that match was like, wow, that felt like the semifinal loss against Florida, and it was, it was a wake-up call, really. We thought we did enough work in the offseason to be the culture we want to be, but it was fake, and we need to get real and we need to have real conversations and the leadership needs to do what the leadership um, hasn't been doing and didn't do last year. And without the BYU loss, I think that would have shown up in the tournament again, and, uh, which is kind of what happened the year before. Wins are super important and they create confidence in a team, but you really learn from your losses. You really learn from those mistakes because when you win, you kind of just gloss over the mistakes you might have made during the game. But when you have a loss, you're forced to sit down and really examine what you did wrong and what you have to change in order to like stop that from happening again. And I think it hap that loss happened at a really crucial time. Following its first loss, the road wouldn't get any easier for Stanford. Though, the Cardinal viewed it as a chance at redemption, with matches against number five Penn State, number one Minnesota, and two matches against number three Texas, all in the span of a week. is the job for the Cardinal to improve to six and one on the season. Absolutely phenomenal stuff from the Stanford Cardinal. Seth Johnson on the slide, dug up. Gray finishes the job. Stanford now 3-0 here at Maples after knocking off number five Penn State, number one Minnesota, and number three Texas. It kind of hurts seeing on all the social media pages like down goes number one. So I think that stretch was really great for, we kind of had a fire lit under us and it was great for preparing for later on. Having a tough preseason pre definitely shows what we're made of. Looking before the season starts, we're like, ooh, we play these teams? Like that's gonna be hard. But at the same time, it's really exciting to go to these new places um, where we know the atmosphere is awesome. Like volleyball is huge in these places that we're gonna play. Um, and to play tough competition, it just, like I said, it prepares us. And it's really fun to be like, OK, we, we know that team is really good. And if we could beat them, like, what does that say about us? And so it's cool to see. After four straight wins against top five opponents, Stanford finished non-conference play with an 8-1 and one record, ready to take that momentum into Pac-12 play. The team dropped just four sets through its first 12 matches in the conference. But after a four-match road trip, which included three top 25 opponents, the Cardinal returned home to face a Colorado squad looking to end the streak and avenge a loss from earlier in the season. Smith blocks. Stanford goes on a run at the end of set number one. Fans on their feet in Maples Pavilion. It is set point Stanford. Alade 
puts it away. Stanford goes into the short intermission. Up two sets to none. Outside to Span. Span's gonna get it done. And we are going to a fourth set. Outside. Huge block. And Colorado has done it. Forced Stanford into a fifth set. Jenna Gray throws it down and Stanford takes a hard block match and a win over Colorado. What a performance by the Colorado Buffaloes. Stanford got tested and got pushed. The huddle after that fourth set was definitely one that got us fired up because we wanted to keep that streak alive. We wanted to have kind of our pride of our home court. Um, and Colorado's a great team. Um, but we knew that we should beat them and that we could beat them and we weren't playing our best. Um, and then the fifth set, I think we turned it around. Colorado is a really great team and they have a lot of big arms and they were pretty scrappy. And I think um, by that point in the season, we possibly were getting a bit complacent. Um, I think we were riding this wave of really good wins against some great teams. And I think we got a little too comfortable. And I think that Colorado match was a great reminder that Anyone can win on any given day, and we have to bring our best um, each time we step onto the court. Despite the close call at Maples, the team's momentum carried through the rest of conference play. When it was all said and done, Stanford finished a perfect 20-0 in the Pac-12, the first time a team had finished undefeated in the conference since 2003. I think it's such an honor, but I think it's a testament to how focused we were on our goals to be undefeated and one of the most competitive uh, conferences in the nation I think is, is an incredible feat and I'm so thankful that uh, our team was able to do it but I think it just speaks to how much focus and drive we had to accomplish that ultimate goal. There's season life and then there's NCAA tournament life. At the conclusion of the regular season Stanford held a 28-1 record and was awarded the number one overall seed in the NCAA tournament. With that honor came the opportunity to play on its home court at Maples Pavilion through the regional finals. We knew that we had that target on our back. Um, and yes, we ranked number one going in, but I think we always felt like there was definitely more to improve on. And I think that's a great feeling to have. I feel like in Stanford in general and in our program in general, there's a lot of focus on growth and learning. And that carried us through a lot of the season and um, made it so that we were never complacent with where we were at. We were always looking forward and looking at how we could get better. I think it just gave us so much more confidence going into the tournament because A, we just felt physically so much better because we didn't have to travel, we got to stay on campus. Um, and then B, you're always just a little less nervous because when you're in your own home gym, you know what it's going to be like, you know the atmosphere and you know that you'll have your fans um, rather than being in a, another really rowdy gym. So I think at practice it was um, very confident um, and it was nice knowing that we just had to focus on what we had to do to get better and rather not anything um, outside of us. In search of its eighth national title, the Cardinal got off to a hot start in the NCAA tournament. It swept Alabama State and Loyola Marymount in the first two rounds and defeated conference rival Washington State in four sets in the regional semifinal. As its attention turned to the regional final, the team prepared for a familiar foe in Penn State with a ticket to the final four on the line. Just as I'm starting to wane, I gotta walk through the flame cause the rains may come. semifinal appearances and 14 national titles. It's a national championship match in the regional final. That's what we're seeing right now. Stanford got off to a slow start against Penn State, dropping the first set 25 to 18. And in the second set, the Cardinal fell behind 16 to 11, knowing it would have to turn things around quickly to keep its title hopes alive. up 
two sets to one on Penn State. In the first set against Penn State, we all knew that we just did not play well. Um, they played out of their minds, like they were on fire, everything was clicking for them and that was the complete opposite for us. In the second set we were down 16-11 and all of us were like, oh my goodness, like we're going to have to battle if we want this to ever be a possibility of getting to the Final Four. And there was definitely a huddle where we talked about the BYU match, where we talked about the Florida match from the year prior. Um, and being like, we hated that feeling and we don't want this to ever happen again. And I think that sparked individual little runs. I thought we were a pretty solid group, but it was tested and solidified in that match. And once we won that match, I felt like we're gonna win the national championship. I just felt like as a culture and as a group, we were gonna be strong enough to do it. And we never felt that way the year before. With Penn State in the rearview mirror and another trip to the final four up next, the Cardinal knew it would have to step up its game against the only team to hand it a loss in the regular season. All of the media surrounding that BYU game was like, will they avenge their only loss of the season? And so that was kind of fun, honestly, to be like, will we, will we not? I think that we knew that we had to just serve them super aggressively and get them out of system. And then also it was kind of nice going back and watching the film of us against them early in the season. And it almost made us more confident seeing us play against them because we realized how much better we were um, at the end of the season compared to the beginning. This is the final four. All that it comes down to is who's going to be composed, who's just going to play, who's just going to play hard and be composed the entire time. And I think if we can do that, we will handle them absolutely from the start. Let's come out strong, let's have a lead, and let's keep the lead. The number one seed Stanford Cardinal versus the BYU Cougars, the only team to defeat the Cardinal this year. Big block on the outside, Catherine Plummer, and the first point on the board for the Cardinal. Free ball here. Right side, ripped into the cross court by Fitzmorris. Set point number one by Hintz. Plummer out of the back row, and it falls inside of Ronnie Jones Perry, and a very easy first set win for the overall number one seed and the Stanford Cardinal. Up into the block and rejected once again. Stanford just putting on a block party right now. That's nine blocks for the Stanford Cardinal. Plummer ripping down the line. BYU already trailing one set to none. They lost the first 25-15. Sharp into the cross court on the slide. And the number one seeds look unstoppable. Momentum rally. Jones Perry is roofed. And another stuff. Match point number one. That's going to be blocking of the set. Nicely played by Jenna Gray. And Stanford is moving on to the championship match for the 16th time and will take on either Illinois or Nebraska. Tammy shut them down <laughs> blocking-wise. He really shut down their offense. And the things that we've been working on in practice in the days leading up to BYU were very focused, and I think they really translated over well to that match. Following its sweep over BYU in the national semifinal, Stanford reached its 16th national title match in program history. And after Nebraska defeated Illinois in the other Final Four matchup, Stanford knew its toughest challenge of the season was up next, as the Cardinal got set to face off against the defending national champions. A sellout crowd on hand once again at the Target Center. It's the defending champion, the Nebraska Cornhuskers, taking on the Stanford Cardinal. The biggest thing to remember is that when it comes down to it, it's just a volleyball game. I think we need to play hard, we need to play with intensity, but if we play with 
the passion, the trust, and the confidence, and the love for each other that we have this entire season, not a chance for the best team, hands down. Two-story programs playing for a singular championship in that crown. Are we ready and in place for a classic? Vince Morris, what a good choice that time by Jenna Gray. McClure ripping, nice dig by Becky right on target. Son into the cross court and out of bounds. Another set point. Not yet. Son is rejected. What a set point by both of these teams. Set points for the Cornhuskers leading 24-21. Exactly the same score that Stanford led by in the opening set before we went to OT. Stanford eventually winning at 28-26. Fitzmorris through the block and down. One set point save. Stivrens, a net violation. Stivrens missed it out of bounds but a net violation on Stanford. And we're tied in this championship match at one set apiece. Set point, and it's the block once again of Jenna Gray. And Temi Alade will close out the third set for the Stanford Cardinal. Gensberger, set point number one. back at the line. Got to go to Fecky. Into the cross court, down. One match point saved. Remember, all the way back to the first set, Karch. Similar situation. Stanford had three set points, and they had to go to OT to close it out. Nebraska's not going anywhere. 18,000 on their feet. They did go to Alade. Fecky. my freshman year I was kind of just in amazement of us winning I was pretty naive and I didn't yet completely understand the significance of winning a national championship I obviously it was has always been a dream and a goal of mine but sometimes I I don't think I realized all the hard work um, and just the dedication it takes to win a national championship and then June, this past year uh, winning I just felt super proud uh, of my teammates um, and this and this program just because I know now how much time how much effort goes in behind the scenes um, and it was just a really great feeling to see all of our hard work pay off. Winning that eighth national championship is definitely really sweet. Um, it shows that Stanford has been able to continually succeed in the sport of volleyball and everyone that comes here is also a great athlete, a great person, has great social relationships. It's just really fun to be able to be like, I'm a Stanford student athlete, because that comes with a lot of prestige. Um, and to be able to wear the Stanford jersey at every match and during practice to have Stanford volleyball on your chest, um, it's just a sense of accomplishment because like, I got here um, and there's something backing me, there's a whole community backing me um, that I know will be there for the rest of my life.
what's especially incredible about all the girls on the team is that they are such important role models for a lot of people. And I think beyond the national championships and beyond the undefeated seasons, um, like working to just be great representations in our community, I think is super important. And every year, I think we continue to do that, but maintaining and even exceeding what you've done the year before in terms of that role you play, I think is important. And I think it's something um, that can always be worked on. The legacy of Stanford women's volleyball would not be where it is today without the contributions of its alumni. And after its NCAA record eighth national title, the team lost four student athletes to graduation, each one having served an important role in the program's success during their time on the farm. Though their presence would be missed, the team had to turn the page on the 2018 season and prepare to defend its national title. As the Cardinal returned to campus to begin the 2019 campaign, Stanford welcomes six newcomers to the program. Hi, I'm Natalie Birdie. I'm from Corona Del Mar, California. I'm most excited for is getting close to all my teammates and like having a new group of like close friends and like a new family. Hey, I'm Selena. I'm a freshman. I'm from Belmont, California, and I think it's been going pretty well. I mean, we're all just bringing our stuff into the dorms and getting settled in, so so far it's been pretty good. Hi, I'm Katie. I'm from Indianapolis, Indiana. I'm a freshman with them, and I think I'm most excited about like getting to know people a lot better and just getting it after the gym. Feels really good. I think everyone's really excited and there's good energy and positive energy, which I think is really important in the beginning of the year. hard to get to the top and it's even harder to stay at the top so I think a lot that we focused on is that this next year is a, is a new year we have new people so we can't do exactly what we did last year and I think we got caught up in that um, after winning our first national national championship so we're kind of reinventing ourselves trying out some new fun things and I'm excited for this next season because I think we can do a lot of great things after I'm gone I want to leave a legacy of having a really competitive environment, whether that be in practice, in games, in the locker room, um, in class, in social relationships, because I think that just like builds people. When I've been at Stanford, or since I've been at Stanford, I've grown as a person, as a player, as a student, everything. And I think having that be the expectation um, for our program and for just every student athlete and person at Stanford, um, if that is the expectation, I think our program is just going to flourish throughout the whole year, and I really hope that that's the legacy that we leave. My hope is for the program, and I think it has been, is that uh, there's been a lot of influence on the student athlete as a whole person. I think the coaching staff does a really good job of recognizing each player as not just a player, but someone who comes to Stanford with dreams um, academically, uh, wishes for what they want to do on the in the classroom and also in the gym. So I think establishing this program as it moves forward, as continuing to develop the whole person, is a massive task and a massive goal. But I think we've done a great job so far, and I'm established to see it go even further, especially with integrating the six new people coming in. The one thing that Stanford does for everybody is it dares to dream. Maybe you can dare to dream. You can dare to like dream of being the best, and then you have the resources and opportunities to actually do that. And there's not a lot of places that you can do that. Our culture will be very different this year than it was last year, and, um, but I know that the players are coming in are gonna bring those things that every Stanford athlete does across the, across the country. It's not surprising because of those things that people are winning national championships. It's just in their DNA as athletes to, and as students and as people to, to achieve at a high level. So bring it